good Wednesday evening to everybody. Let's all stand, if we would. It's good to see everybody in the house of the Lord tonight, our guest, and, and uh, to see the Riverbend kids and Riverbend Ignited students and then all of the old folks who stay out in the sanctuary. Amen. And uh, everybody 19 and up, and uh, we're glad you're here. We're going to pray tonight, and uh, uh, I will tell you, I'm glad you're all here. Nobody stayed home because Sunday it was hot up in here. But I found out that I had one air conditioner like on half a leg, and the other one wasn't cooling at all. So the one that wasn't cooling is now, and the one that's on a half a leg is uh, still on half a leg. <laughs> uh, but we're going to get them all lined out, and all the air conditioner guys, as you can might imagine, are slammed. And uh, so they're just trying to get people straightened up. But thank God for air conditioner. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God for it. And uh, uh, I, I don't know if, if it's just that great of a blessing, Brother Jerry, or we just got spoilt to it. But either way, I like it. Amen. I like it. Amen. And I, I, I tell the man I can do without heat. In the wintertime, I can keep putting clothes on, but I'm going to shut down so far. And y'all ought to say, thank you, Lord. He can. <laughs> Amen. But uh, we're going to pray tonight. Lots and lots and lots of things to pray about. We need to pray for our country. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Uh, there's some crazy stuff still going on over there. And you better keep your eyes on it. And because uh, when those people start crying out to Jesus Christ and acknowledging him as the Messiah, the, the rapture is going to take place. Just get ready. Amen. So we got to get ready and we got to pray for that. We've got um, um, Amanda and I uh, uh, went to Ohio. Our friends, Barry and Ashley Blankenship, she lost her stepfather 10 days ago and her mother on Friday and uh, lost them both in the span of 10 days. So please remember her and their family. And uh, we've got, uh, I went to visit uh, Gary Tanner this week and he is in very bad shape, struggling very badly. He has, he has went down even further. Let's remember him. Um, Brother David is sick this evening and is in need of prayer. Got a few folks battling with cancer. Got some family issues. And um, the, just like I said, the prayer list is very, very long and extensive. Does anyone over here on my right have a request of prayer? Anybody? All right, Sister Rita. All right, bub. Okay. Here in the middle? Yes, ma'am. All right, Sister Margaret. All right, Sister Michelle. No. No, let's do that and just remember Mama as well. Anybody over here? Sister Nadine. All right, anybody else? Brother Ronnie? All right, let's remember her. Uh, Sister Ruth, you have your hand up? Okay. Sister Sandy asked for us to remember Sister Virginia so she's not doing good tonight. All right, we'll do that. Uh -huh. uh, let's pray for Sister Barker, Sister Virginia, Brother Dole and Sister Norma. Sister Rhonda and Sister Rochelle have been asking for prayer. And... Uh, as, uh, as we said, there, there are quite a lot of people in need of prayer. But fortunately, we know the one that heals. And his name is Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. He is a healer. And uh, we're going to open the door for the opportunity, the door of opportunity for God to do some miracles because we pray tonight. What do you say? Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come to you because we trust in you. So we praise you, Lord God, because you hear and answer prayer. You've healed us. There, there are probably a hundred or better miracles, bona fide miracles in this house that have, have had healing and restoration and deliverance. And many, many times you've answered our prayers, God. So we praise you for that. And, and we bring all these needs to you, spoken or unspoken, known or unknown, big or little. It makes no difference. You are the one that hears and answers prayer. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I know, God, you're a healer. I know you're a healer. God, we offer 
all these names up to you, all these situations up to you. Miracle worker, way maker, you are God our help. Come on, let's sing for the Lord just a little bit. I feel the presence of the Lord moving. Come on, let's press just a little, press just a little. Come on, come on, come on, Lord, we seek you. We seek your name, we seek your power, we seek your authority. We give you praise, honor, and glory because you are the God that hears. You are the God that sees. You are the God that heals. We know there is no other God beside you. You're the one that sits on the throne. You're the lion of the tribe of Judah, the lamb for sinners slain. You are the lily of the valley, the bride of the morning star. You are, you are, you are. Hallelujah. Let's praise God in the sanctuary. Come on, clap your hands under the Lord and lift up your voice like a trumpet. Sing hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord together right now. Hallelujah. Lord, hear our cry. Lord, we cry out to you. Come heal our land. We're in need of healing. Breathe, Breathe. into the Breathe. dry and thirsty. Hallelujah. 
Well, there's a beautiful presence of the Lord in this room. There is a beautiful presence of the Lord in this room. Lord, hear our prayer. Touch our generations. We are your people and we need you. Not one time have I called on him in need and he not be there. I've called on him in want and he didn't show up. But Brother Blake, not one time have I called on him in need and him not show up. Now the answer, is, Sister Leanne's not always yes. It's not always what I want to hear, but I've never been in doubt that he was listening. Amen. Please be seated. Again, thank you so much for coming tonight. It's good to see everyone here. It's always good to, to have a good number on Wednesday night. And uh, um, I, I've been saying this was my favorite service, but after the last few Sundays, I don't know if, if I got a favorite. Just whichever one I'm in is my favorite right that minute. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to receive our evening tithe and offerings. And uh, uh, we'll remind you to keep on giving. And uh, we've uh, uh, been able to be a blessing in some different areas. We'll continue to. Um, I might mention to you, I don't have them ready just yet, but uh, we've uh, went ahead and taken care of our first two commitments, uh, um, Christmas for Christ and she's for Christ and save our children this year. So uh, we only we actually have two remaining, and we're going to start reaching out to you for some envelope pledges. But uh, you've been you've been incredible in your giving, and we're so grateful for that. And uh, we may be coming to you for a couple of air conditioners. <laughs> Amen. And uh, what I'll do, Brother Jerry, is I'll just turn them off for like three services in a row. And there'll be people throwing money out all over the offering and saying, get them in here, get them in here. That's my baby's Christmas money, but we got to have some air conditioning. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about? Amen, amen. We give on Givelify. That's our giving app on your phone, your smartphone. And we um, have a giving access on our website, www.riverbendpentecostals.com. That's through PayPal. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 477, New Madrid, Missouri, 63869. And then, of course, we have the pans for your giving. And uh, stay faithful in your giving. The Lord will stay faithful to you. I'd like to put the prayer up. And uh, um, we're really happy. We've got a lot of guests tonight, but I didn't acknowledge. But we're happy to have Thomas and Charlie Crosby with us and Thomas's wife with us and they came here when they were little bitty fellas y'all remember the crosby boys yes. amen there's just half of them but uh the the rest of them will be coming but we're so glad to have thomas and charlie and thomas's wife and their little girl with us amen back in the house of the lord he sent me a message this week said you're gonna be seeing us all the time i said thank the lord amen yes. praise the lord we're grateful for that we're grateful for that. You put the offering up. Pray it with us right now. Upon the authority of your word I have given, and it shall be given unto me. Press down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken, and I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon us such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received, my whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I'm blessed going in, I'm blessed going out, and all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. Bring your tithe and offerings forward as you do worship and on your way up and way back. Say hi to somebody. Tell them it's good to see them. testify to that? If I just have a little talk with Jesus, he'll make everything all right. He does. He does. He does. You may be seated. Like for, oh, I've got a couple of announcements before we dismiss. Immediately after service tonight, and let me tell you this, we need as many people involved with Vacation Bible School as possible. And if you can make plans to go on vacation, you can make plans to be at BBS. Come on, somebody. So, uh, Vacation Bible School, it's going to be July 17th, right? Yes. July, July 19th through the 20th. 19th through the, we're having the bouncy house July extravaganza 20th. on the 17th. Yeah, that's the kickoff. But we need some help. Amen? Amen. And some people to come help. That's right. Am I not supposed to be telling them that? Yeah, we need some folks to help, and, uh, and I'm talking to you, all of you. I don't care if this is your first time here. Sign up to help. We'll take it. That's right. Amen? That's, that's the real deal. That ain't no joke. That's the real deal. You want to be a part of, of something that's alive and something that's bumping and thumping and blowing and going, get on board. Right. Amen? Amen? Yeah. So right after church in the family center, going to be a VBS meeting. Everybody that wants to help, please be there. If you think you might want to help, be there. And if you don't want to help, come pray when I get through preaching, and then you want to go be over there. <laughs> June the 29th, that's a Tuesday night, going to be a ladies' night here at the church. We took a couple of months off, but we're back at it June the 29th at 6 o'clock p.m. in the Family Center. And um, what you're going to be doing is having food and fellowship and all, but you're going to be building a couple of gift baskets for Sister Barker and Sister Virginia who have, are in the nursing home at the present time. And there's a list of things to bring in the back of the church. And if you'd be so kind to write your name down beside what you plan to bring. And then June the 29th, Tuesday night at 6 p.m. in the Family Center, be here. And we need to minister to them and to one another. 
Amen? Amen. A lot of things going to change after Bible study tonight. We're going to learn how to pray. And uh, praise the Lord. Maybe I need to have everybody stay out here for this. But you can tell if somebody's praying or not. You can very quickly. Especially if you start asking them for a little bit of their time, talent, and treasure. And so we're asking. Like for Riverbend kids, come line up across the front. So happy Kellen came tonight to be with us. And Bo, and he brought his buddy with him. And some more. All right. All right. That's what I'm talking about. Man. Then the Fowler family band. All right. Okay. Take off. This is great, y'all. Yeah, y'all get a treat. Your br brother, brother Larry and uh, Sister Ashley are going to be doing, uh, they do it once a month, kind of give them a break, and we're grateful for that. We're also taking applications for somebody to do it again once in a while. Amen. The River Bend Ignited, that's 12 to 18 years old. You can be dismissed. And, and more, this, this crew's getting on up there now. Numbers is growing. And then we still got a good crowd back here. If you, if you, weren't, if you were not here last Wednesday and you need a handout, please raise your hand, and we have some for you for Wednesday night Bible study. Um, Brother Shannon is going to hand them out. And uh, uh, and we're going to move right into our Bible lesson. Uh, I, I hope you got to. Anybody get the message about bringing them with you tonight? Good. I, I, did it help anybody remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thomas and Charlie both need a, a copy over there. And uh, we want to make sure you have your hand out because you're going to turn this into a prayer pattern. And uh, how many have used a prayer pattern before? They're incredibly helpful. What's well, yes. How many just don't ever pray? <laughs> yeah, Kevin raised his hand. He's just trying to be cute. I don't know something about that role back there. Ronnie was trying to be funny Sunday. Now Kevin's trying to be funny today. We're Cheech and Chong, we're trying to get changed up back here. <laughs> Y'all just decide which one you want to be. Hey, Amen. Some, some of these people don't have no clue in the world who I'm talking about there. I wish I didn't. The Lord's Prayer Pattern. I'm going to say something double-barreled right now. If you don't pray regular, regularly, start tonight. I'm letting that sink in a minute. We're going to have some throat. That Sunday is going to be dynamite. Father's Day, we'll have a house full uh, it's going to be great, but there's nothing more as powerful as what we're teaching right now. You got to learn to pray, and what we're doing is teaching us how to pray and putting some tools in our hands. Now, I didn't give you a prayer pattern, but I gave you a handout that when you make notes on it and make scriptures on it and write things down on it, it will turn into a tool you can use to become a prayer warrior. Now, you can hang around the church and not pray, but you won't be a part of the church without praying. You hear me? Matter of fact, the truth is, you go to praying, after we talk about what we've talked about tonight, you go to praying, I promise you, if you go to praying with an honest heart, VBS will be packed full of grown folks trying to help. It's true. It's the work of the Lord, work of the kingdom of God. And when you get connected to the Lord, you want to be a part of what he's got going on. That's right. Amen? Amen? All right. 
Let me read this. I'm going to do a little bit of a review of part number one, and then I'm going to move into part number two, and by the help of the Lord, we're going to get done tonight because uh, does anybody remember our series on anxiety? Anybody remember that anxious for nothing? I think we may break that back open again, and then a little bit later on, we're going to do our uh, praying through the tabernacle, another prayer pattern series, and uh, just, just got some things we're working on. But, but the point is, is I want to put some things in your hands that helps you overcome. But you know you'll have to do it. There is not a move of God going to take place to make you do what you're supposed to do. We will never have that good a church. Okay? Never will. Now, I want to read this to you. It's from the same issue of the Pentecostal life that Brother Burns gave this outline for praying through the prayer, prayer pattern. It's by Bishop Chester Wrights in the March 2021 edition. He says, well, let me back up just a minute. A few years ago, maybe two years ago, I put a big whiteboard. It's right here behind this wall in my office. And I started writing some focus steps down on it. And I have 13. I know that's supposed to be unlucky, but that's, that's not true. But uh, I have 13 focus steps written down. There probably could be more, maybe a few less, but probably more. Step one says, now step one actually was step 11, but I just wrote down a one and then made one, number one 11 because I realized step 11, it has to be number one or else that you don't have no more steps. And step one is to restore a culture of prayer. A culture of prayer. Now, anybody know what culture is? What the word culture means? Anybody? Take a shot in the dark. The way you do things. Okay? The way of life at the River Bend Pentecostals. We pray. Okay? We pray. If you're not yet, you will be. We pray. All right. Now, uh, I read something this past week that smote me in my heart, and I thought, oh, Lord, I've dropped the ball on that. So we're just kind of stepping it up right now. But it said we have to establish a clear discipleship pathway as a part of the Riverbend culture, meaning there has to be a clearly defined avenue whereby one arrives at being a disciple of Jesus Christ. With me? Remember, well, I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. Is that a fact? All right, how do you know? That's the question we're going to provide the answer for. All right, I follow him. I obey him. I live a life that is disciplined because that's the root word for disciple, a life that is disciplined in accord with that of Jesus Christ. All right? Now, step one of establishing a clear discipleship pathway is to help us build a prayer life. Now, there are going to be things happen in your life, mess-ups, circumstances, stupid people that will cause you to pray. That ain't a prayer life. Because when it gets fixed or gets unfixable, you're going to quit praying. A prayer life has to be established, and it's something you have to build. You have to work at it. Right? Now, there are people that can pray, but the Bible talks about praying in the Spirit, praying with the understanding, and praying in the Holy Ghost. These are things we need to learn what that means and how to do it, and establish a habitual praying where we cover all three of those. Now, we'll probably delve into them a little bit more later, but I want to read this quote by Brother Chester Wright from Antioch in Maryland. Biblical prayer is not an obligatory activity or a religious exercise. Biblical prayer is not something you do out of obligation, nor is it a religious exercise. 
It is an expression of true spiritual life. If you are led by the Spirit, you will pray. Thus, we can conclude that biblical prayer has two dimensions. The foundation of all prayer, which is fellowship with the Father, that's inflow, and the ultimate purpose of prayer is the Father ministering his will through us, which is outflow. So when we take in from God, we give out from God. Neither taking in or giving out is possible without first, everybody say first, first. establishing a spiritual connection with God. You can't take anything from him nor give anything out from him without first establishing that connection. Now, we're going to talk about that. The Jasinskis, which I read to you last week, they wrote this, and I, in part, prayer is the vehicle that reaches the throne room of God. He has chosen this method to flow through us like the electrical wires in a house. He is the service panel and we are the conduits. Here's what I want you to remember. People are hurting and they need help from a power greater than what this world can give. So we plug in to prayer. Are you with me? The world needs more than we can give them. So by plugging in, connecting to God in prayer, we empower ourselves to help a world that has no connection to God. Okay. Now, I remember, I'm reviewing from last week. Luke 11, verses 1 through 4, and then we use Matthew 6 and 13 as a conclusion it's what is commonly referred to as the Lord's Prayer. Now, while this is true, it also serves as a pattern for prayer. Now, in verse number one, the disciples ask him, teach us to pray. Now, we've given two reasons for this request. Does anybody remember what they are from last week? What's the first one? They want to be like him. That's what they're in this for. He said, take up your cross and follow me. They forsook their nets and they followed him. So Jesus is praying and so they want to be like him. And remember I told you, find somebody you want to be like. It's okay. Matter of fact, that's how it's supposed to work. I can go to the Bible and show you, but one particular case it says for the aged women to teach the younger women how to behave. All right, let somebody lead you. You're not that smart and not that powerful to do it yourself. I, I said this, and I, I like it. I, it's not original with me, but everybody needs somebody in their life that if they show up on your front porch and your living room is messy, you will not open the door till you've stuffed everything under the couch. You don't know what I'm talking about? You hear the door knock. You go peek through the door. If it's one of your heathen friends, you just say, come on in. Don't pay any attention to anything. Rake the couch off and have a seat. But if it's this person, you peek through the door and you think, oh, my goodness, no, 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 and you turn into a hurricane of cleaning. You all know what I'm talking about? We all need somebody in like that in our life that makes us better. Okay, Jesus did that for his disciples and he will do it for you too. The second reason is, first one is Jesus was their example. The second reason is, yes, there's a desire for relationship with God that is within every human being from birth. Remember I told you, Colossians 2 and 10 says, and ye are complete 
in him. So we are incomplete outside of him, correct? In Acts 17, 26 and 27, and I paraphrase, but it says, and God hath made all nations of men that they should seek the Lord and find him. This is not hide and go seek where you might find him or you might not. If you begin to seek after the Lord, you will find him. When you seek after him with your whole heart. Okay. So, and they might find him, though he be not very far from every one of us. Now, Luke 11, 2 through 4, and Matthew 6 and 13 says, And he said unto them, When ye pray, say. Now, Brother Burns, did anybody read Brother Burns' article from the Pentecostal Life in March about prayer? Does anybody read Brother Burns' article about prayer and remember reading it? All right, we subscribe to the Pentecostal life. We buy 10 issues a month. Read it, please. Pick it up off the back table and read it. Matter of fact, there's a stack of them from different months back there right now, but read them. Instead of watching The View or one of them other things. God have mercy on us. Somebody just said, how does he know what I'll be watching in the middle of the day? <laughs> All right. He says that the word prayer here is a word that involves the movement of your vocal cords, which means it's all right to meditate. Well, Brother Ronnie and I have discussed that before. Meditation's a good thing. But as a rule, prayer involves us opening our mouth and speaking words. Because prayer is an act of faith, and faith without works is dead. So we got to learn to pray. Now, I don't want to stay on this very long because I got to stay focused, but practice praying until you pray in front of anybody at any time. It's okay to practice praying. Well, I thought we were supposed to wait, you know, till all hell breaks loose or, or until they ask us to pray over the offering or until they ask. No, no, work on praying. Make yourself a better prayer. You know how you do that? Practice. Shazam. Practice. Work at it. Write it down if you have to. I do. I don't wait on all prayer to come out of heaven and slap me upside the head. I work at it. See, we, we've overly mysticized prayer. I said that last week. It's not mystical. Matter of fact, when you start all of that pontificating and trying to say all those big words and pray in King James Version English, y'all know what I'm talking about? Saying thee and thou and all kinds of goofy stuff that you don't normally say. I think the Lord says, oh, hush up. I ain't going to listen to you till you get real. I mean, really. You talk to the Lord just like you talk to anybody, just with great respect. But you shouldn't talk to anybody with great respect. Come on, somebody. Just talk to the Lord. And sometimes it's okay to say, here I am and I'm messed up. Need some help. It's okay, all right? So when you pray, say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. That means done us wrong. We're going to get there in just a minute. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And Matthew 6 and 13 says, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
And in that one word, everybody ought to know, amen. So be it. It is done. Now, so we've already established that if you want to be an effective prayer, you have to get a connection going, right? You got to get a connection established. So the first part of the Lord's prayer pattern is designed to establish that connection. It is a universal connection point. When we say our Father, He is our Father. But guess who else's Father He is? Everybody. And how do we know that? Because what's the Bible say? In Malachi 3 and 10? Or Malachi 2 and 10? Have we not all one Father and hath not one God created us. So that is the universal connection point. He is our Father. So it'll work for everybody. John 15 and 5 says, if we abide in him, we will bring forth much fruit. So if we're connected and we stay connected to him, there will be evidence that God is working in us and through us if we're connected to him. And then he says, without me, you can do nothing. So we established that I'm here praying because I need to be connected to him because without him, I can do nothing. Here's the problem. Somebody, does anybody know what the problem is with us praying generally? We only want the Lord to take care of the things we can't do. Except there's a problem. Can't do anything. Huh? Y'all know what I'm talking about? The book says pray about everything. In everything. With prayer and supplication, let your request be made known unto God. Okay? So, we have to stay connected to God because without him, we can do nothing. So, that is strong evidence both of the need for this connection and the availability of that connection. Is there anybody has any comments about our Father in review? Let me ask this question. I'm kind of scared to ask it, so I'm going to hide my eyeballs. Has anybody tried to pray this as a prayer pattern since last Wednesday? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, six, seven, eight, nine. I prayed it a bunch of times. Now, I've got to confess to you, I don't always get through it, and it's not because I quit, but it's because I get at step two and get hung up in a good way. All right? So... Any questions on our Father? Does everybody understand how that's a connection point? Now, I kind of did a little something. And I, I'm just going to burn through it real fast, and then I'm going to get on to the rest of this because we're burning daylight. So I, I wrote down a little prayer from my heart off of step one. And I said, I want to thank you because you are, and I want to thank you for letting me be. So I thank him that he is. That's a big deal. Why is that such a big deal? All right, let's think, because the book says, for without faith it is impossible to please him because he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So I'm going to begin my prayer with, Lord, I want to thank you because you are. And I want to thank you for letting me be. I am created in your image and likeness. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. 
I have been created by you and for you. And in you I move and live and have my being. You are the vine and I am the branch. My purpose is your purpose. You're working all things for my good. You are my redeemer. You are my healer. You are my peace. You are my provider. All that I am and all I ever hope to be, I find it in you. Whatever you're doing today, whomever you bless today, whoever's praying, whoever you need to pray, whoever you need to give, whoever you need to listen, I want to be part of it. You're my father. I want to build on the fact that you let me be. And I want to begin to declare, I want you to hear me right now. I'm going to begin to declare everything you have become to me since my birth. I started thinking about the Lord giving my daddy the Holy Ghost. And I started thinking about the Lord healing me when I was a little boy. And I started thinking about the Lord giving me a good family and, and a daddy who worked hard and didn't drink no more and, and a mama who had a rich heritage. And I started thinking about the Lord giving me a good grandma and grandpa that I could be with all the time. And they prayed all the time. And they were a great godly example. And I started thanking God for my wife and, and for my children and for my church. And, and before you know it, I was Established a connection with him that's just me and him. See, we want to have a relationship with God, but we want to bring all our baggage with us. That only works if you brought it to him to give to him. Okay? But I ain't got to that part yet. I'm just establishing he is and he let me be. And now I'm going to rejoice in the fact that not only has he let me be, Brother Jerry, but he has been with me from the jump. And I can testify over and over and over what he is to me. And that's important. Why? Because I'm the one praying. And I'm the one that needs a connection point. Now, I, this is not, this is not a asking for, begging for compliments, though I ain't above it. But just when I started writing that, Brother Jerry, I felt the Holy Ghost just like start moving around me. And it was like the Lord said, I'm listening. We're getting connected, feeling the presence of the Lord. Think about it as praying men and women, how much more effective our prayer would be if we would get in the spirit from the jump. Okay. It may not get done. I don't know. It's all right. It's all right. When we get done, y'all going to be some praying mammy jammies. What, what do you think about that? Did anybody write a few things down out of it maybe? Well, I mean, what, do, you, do you see how you can begin to build your own connection to God? Oh, I could preach right now. Because you realize what I'm doing is I'm establishing my connection going forward based upon who he's been to me already. And that ain't got nothing to do with faith. It's knowledge. I don't have to believe that no more. I know it. I don't have to say, well, I think, no, I know God was with me. I know the hand of God was with on, upon me. And that connection over what he has done establishes me in what he's going to do. Okay? Yes. And we moved into an arena that's so powerful because y'all know we get, we become Pentecostal crowd junkies. Meaning we get caught up in all of the moment and anybody, I mean, you should, come on now, come on now. Don't turn me off because you see somebody come off the street that don't know nothing about the Lord and everybody start juking and jiving and guess what they start doing? Don't even know how to clap. They start busting the move that they did in the club last weekend because they don't know how to holy dance. So they start getting their groove on just like they did last weekend at Buck's place. Okay. Anybody can do that. It's not bad. It's good to start worshiping the Lord. Anybody can do that. But 
can I tell you, there's an arena of power and the presence of God that you can move into when there ain't nobody there but you. And when we find that, what do you think that is going to do to this? Huh? When we don't have to come anymore and start pumping the pump and trying to get everybody on the right page. But when I've been with the Lord all week long, Sister Maria, and I then can enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise because that's all I've been doing. Brother Terrence, I got something in me that causes me to hit that clock at work and say, thank you, Jesus, I got a job. Because I remember when I didn't have one and you came through for me. Thank you, Jesus, that if I can hold out till Friday, paycheck will be in the bank. And me and Mama can go to Sizzler. All right? I know I'm, I'm, I'm off a little bit. I'm wandering off just a little bit, but I think it's so important that we establish that your life with God, the Lord wants to do a flippity flop in us where your life with God doesn't flow from the church out, but from your prayer life in. And then, Sister Leanne, we've talked about it a bunch. You know what church turns into? Celebrate good time. Come on. Huh? You, you see what I'm saying? We come here and we say, Sister Callie, I know you was late, but guess what? I got to tell you what the Lord has done for me this week. I taught three Bible studies. We came down here and we baptized one in Jesus' name, and I prayed for seven people, and two of them got healed. Let's take a run a lap. You know why we struggle with that? Because we struggle with establishing it in our lives. You know why, man, I, I kind of like when we have Sunday night shout downs. You know why we don't have Sunday night shout downs? Because the Lord said, enough blessings on credit. That's right. Amen. Uh-oh. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's right. Uh huh. Yep. And then that's got the option to make you mad still. Like, well, you ain't the one sitting here with the skeeters buzzing all around you on the way home. Or say, you know what? Thank God I got a truck. Absolutely. And some duct tape. Come on, somebody. But here's the deal. Is we, I'm going to meddle right now, but I'm going to meddle in the Holy Ghost. We still... We still don't like to give up our time. But this that I'm preaching about, you can't carry that paper home and paste it up on your mirror and walk by it four or five times a day and think it's going to whoop something on you. We're going to have to take it, lay it down. Have y'all, anybody... Lord, forgive me. Come to one hour of prayer. If you don't want to pray, now I'm going to throw myself out there. If you don't want to pray, just come line up here and watch me. I'll show you what I've learned. Say, oh, you, no, 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 you know good and well I don't think I'm holy, holy, holy because y'all hear me preach enough about what kind of dummy I am. All right? But you know what I do? I told Sister Marie, I bring my Bible. I bring my iPad. I bring my notebook. I bring three or four prayer guides. Okay? And I scatter them all out here. And I read and I write. And guess what? I sing. Not too loud, but I do. 
But I am here, Brother Terrence, to be with God, and he wants me to be comfortable being with him. And he wants to have the option to say, GL, shh. He does it. He does it. Get your pen out, boy. And I'll open up a page, and I'll just start writing, Sister Tina. Because, you see, prayer's not just me talking. It's a conversation between him and I. And sometimes he don't get the chance to say nothing. And I have got all my stuff together and came in and started on my prayer, and the Holy Ghost said, shh, from the jump. And just started putting things in my spirit. And one time I went to brush my teeth and promised to goodness, in the time I brushed my teeth, God gave me an entire message and about four illustrations, all the scriptures, and when I turned the water off, wiped my mouth off, I was ready to preach. It's amazing what God can do if we'll realize he's our father. And he's for us. In case you didn't know, that's one of my songs right now. I put it on and listened to it four or five or six times. I know that you are for me. I know that you are for me. I know that you will never forsake me in my weaknesses. I know that you have come down even if to ride upon my heart to remind me of who you are. Okay, everybody all right? Our Father, who art in heaven, that's step two. This is the one I get hung up at. Here's what this time of prayer is for, is to bring my focus up. to get my focus out of all my problems, out of all my struggles. Brother Ronnie, I feel like this. When you said that a while ago, I saw a picture that I can go into prayer in a storm and before I move out of step two, the sun's shining. Now the storm ain't stopped, but we sing a little talk with Jesus. There's another one we sing, page 31. It says, lift me up above the shadows Lift me up and let me stand on the mountaintop of glory. Let me dwell. When we begin to get our focus up, the world changes and ain't nothing changed except my perspective. And now, oh, Lord, help me. Is this okay? Am I doing all right? And now, you know what I'm doing? I'm looking at things from heaven's point of view instead of a worldly point of view. Just in step two, I've established he's my father and now I said who art in heaven and I've lifted up my eyes and now my focus is beginning to weld together with my connection point and no longer am I thinking about bills that ain't paid, groceries that need to be bought, kids that won't mind, rug that needs to be vacuumed, dishes that need to be done, windows that's been broke out of my truck. People that won't stop blowing my phone up with crazy stuff. People that won't stop blowing up my Facebook wall and making me unfollow, 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 unfollow. I love it when it says unfollow them and they don't know it. Woo-wee! <laughs> that list is longer than my friend list. I unfollow some people I ain't even friends with. It gets me. Does anybody feel what I'm talking about? I know I preached about it Sunday, but I think it's important that we reiterate it again. I saw something. This week, and the Holy Ghost really dealt with me strongly. We got to break up with drama. Break up with it. I was driving beside a girl on her phone today. And you can tell. And I thought, she's on the phone to her friend and she's telling her about her other friend done did her wrong and done talked to her fella and done did all this other stuff. And, and I break up with drama. Let me tell you how to do that. Fall in love with Jesus. It's very simple. Let's get our head up out of that. Okay? 
I'm done with that. Anybody have any questions or comments about? Yes, ma'am. Uh huh. It changes my perspective. Yep. On, on my day in general. Yep. You know, not just like, you know, what I'm thankful for, but like if something goes wrong while I'm at work or while I'm out running around, if I've already like connected with God that morning before uh -huh. my day started, I can take whatever the world throws at me a whole lot better. Uh huh. It changes my perspective. It's 100% true. It's 100% true. We're going to talk about that a whole lot later on in here. But there's a prayer station in the Lord's Prayer where the Lord prepares you for all the doo-doo you're going to face out there in the world. He don't take it away. He prepares you for it. Okay? Now, him and I, where we meet, is holy ground. This connection point is heaven, heavenly. I'm not in heaven yet, but the Bible says in Ephesians 2 and 6 that he has made us set together where? In heavenly places. That's what's happening. I'm establishing our meeting place is not here among my mess, but it's up there above it. I got a prayer about this too, but I'm not going to pray it. Now step number three, hallowed. This is super cool what I learned today. It's different. It's not what, we, I didn't have it last week, but I learned it today. Hallowed be thy name. We now focus on the name of Jesus Christ. We establish the holiness of his name. And I realized something today. I read this. I didn't realize that I read it. When I say hallowed be thy name, I'm stating a fact, right? His name is holy. His name is sacred. His name is is powerful, but you know when I hallow it, I am declaring it to be so in my life. His name is holy, but now I'm declaring it holy in me. It's a declaration where I'm declaring his name holy both in actuality and now from my heart. I'm in agreement with the absolute sovereignty of the name of Jesus Christ, and I am in agreement that salvation is found only in that name, which is found in what chapter and verse? What chapter and verse tells us that's the only name given among men whereby we must be saved? Acts 4 and 12, very good. Remember a message I preached to you a few weeks ago called for his name's sake. It's when I take on the characteristics and attributes of his name where I recognize that everything I say or do reflects on the name of Jesus Christ and with the gravity of that truth echoing in my spirit, I pray for his name's sake. I am making the name of Jesus holy. It's holy in all the world, but I'm declaring it holy right here. There's a connection. I don't have time to unpack it. What happened when Moses was tending sheep in the desert and he saw a bush that was on fire and he turned aside to look at it? What did the Lord say to him? Why? Because you're on holy ground. That ground ain't never been holy before. But when the presence of the Lord moved, the ground became holy. That's what's happened in prayer. That's what's happening in the name. Is This area is holy. This place where him and I are is holy. Holy ground. And I've got to be different. And I've got to make some changes. Man. All right. Anybody have anything to say about step three? The holy, hallowed, holy name of Jesus Christ. Step four. Let's get it covered and then we will finish next week. I won't have to review again, I don't think. I just like reviewing. For one thing, it's some potent stuff. 
Thy kingdom come. There's a transition that takes place during step four. I am publicly before God Almighty and anybody else that might be listening, I'm declaring my submission to Jesus Christ as king of my life. I do not sit upon the throne of my life, but I serve Jesus Christ, the king of kings. I am declaring him as ruler of my life. I no longer even want to be king of my life. I have abdicated my throne and I've established him as king of my life. I am instructed. We are instructed to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And in this time of prayer, I acknowledge my desire to enter into his kingdom. And I cannot enter into his kingdom without first being obedient to his word. John 3 and 3, John 3 and 5, except the man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot see nor enter the kingdom of God. His kingdom is eternal. Isaiah 9 and 7 and Luke 1 and 33. I submit myself. This is my prayer I wrote down, and I'm going to close after this. I submit myself to you as king. It is my desire that there be no uncertainty as to who sits on the throne of my life. I declare Jesus Christ as king. Please check me if any time I try to get back on the throne of my life. I surrender all to you. You are omnipotent, omniscient, and I'm not present, and I'm not. You know the end before the beginning, and I don't. You look at the heart, and I only look at the outer man. I seek your kingdom first. Every area of my life has to be submitted to your authority and rule, and I offer my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you. I declare your majesty. I declare your glory. I declare your power. I declare your spirit. I declare you king over my life. Does that help you see a little bit what it means by a prayer pattern? Huh? Let's do five real fast. If I let y'all out too early, they're going to be mad at me over there on the other side because they got to get their schedule done. Thy will be done. Very simple here. It is now, after I've declared him king of my life. Do y'all know what that really means for him to be king of your life? Everything. And every decision I make, I run it by him first. I'm going to say, I'm going to see you that one and raise you one. Every time you don't, you're going to get in trouble. Because, and here's what happens. We don't ask him what to do, so he's not king. So we do what we want to do and end up in a mess and wonder why God didn't save us. Yeah. And then when it finally gets bad enough, we go pray to him and tell him, please get us out of this mess. Aren't you glad that he doesn't say, I told you so? Huh? That's what we do. That ain't what the Lord does. You know what he does? He helps you. But he first tries to help you learn for yourself why you need to listen to him in the first place. Because if he says, I told you so, you know what that does to us? Same thing it does to your kids when you tell them you told them so. Makes them angry. That ain't cool, really. It ain't cool to all the time say, I told you so. Because first off, we ain't that smart either. But the Lord is merciful, slow to anger. It is now I ask to understand any areas of my life that are not surrendered to God. Any area that does not reflect him as king, 
I am declaring in step number five, as Jesus did in the garden, not my will, but thine be done. And I'm declaring it, Brother Cody, as a matter of fact, not, a good, not just a good idea. It's okay. It's cool to say, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. But I'm not praying it as a good idea. I'm praying it as the desire of my heart. It is. That's, that's what I said earlier. He don't always answer like we want him to, but he always answers. And that was a miracle. That was a miracle. That was the Lord saying, it's time. I got this. I, it's, it, I got it under control. And, and the most beautiful thing about that is he don't just get you in a crisis. You know, because Ronnie, when the storm ends, and it will, the sun's going to shine, and guess where he's going to be? Right there. Are there any areas of my life that aren't surrendered to you, that aren't submitted to you? Is there anything that pastor preaches or teaches that makes me angry when he does? Anything that pastor asks that I automatically start looking around trying to find somebody else who ain't doing it right. I got to be completely surrendered and sold out. That's why I pray, Sister Maria. Because I got to tell you the truth, I ain't always sold out. But when I go to prayer, I can get that way. Everybody with me? That's what you think. Do you think, I'm fixing to put you on the spot. Based upon what we've shared tonight, do you think you could go home with your hand out and pray this prayer as a pattern to the Lord? How many promise me that they'll do it at least one time between now and next Wednesday? Thank you. Stand with me. Now, here's what else I want you to do. We only got through step five. Looks like there's ten, so we're halfway done. Get your paper, and if you get hung up somewhere, if you struggle somewhere, guess, does anybody know what I'd like for you to do? Write it down on the paper, bring it with you next week, and let's hash it out. You want to know why it's important that we do that? We got to learn to pray. The Lord wasn't humoring his disciples when they said, teach us to pray. He didn't say, okay, let's get together. God is great or good first. Okay. God is good. God is great. He didn't do that. That's not a bad thing. Matter of fact, teach it to your kids. We need to pray before we eat. But the Lord wasn't, wasn't, he was discipling these men, Brother Jerry, preparing them to change the world. And how do we know it was a good thing he did? Because they changed the world. These 12 disciples were responsible for the gospel going into the whole world. So Jesus' way worked, and it'll work for us. God, we love you tonight. We thank you for your word, for truth, the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm thankful, Lord, that you always want me to be better and you always want to pull me up higher and you always making ways and speaking and directing in ways where we can be stronger in you and we can live more of an overcoming life and, and the little things that have always beat us down begin to work less and less until they're gone. I pray, God, that this prayer pattern that we're teaching and this, this way of praying 
I pray that everybody in here, that there's nobody that's stubborn and nobody that's hard-headed and says, I'm not going to do it. I pray that everybody will at least try it. Even if they didn't raise their hand, Lord, I pray that they'll maybe try step one and just make a connection because, God, we love each other and we know that you love us and you want the best for us because you are our Father and you're a good Father and you give good gifts to your children and you want us to succeed and not fail. And, and if we fail, you want to use it for a learning experience you have big thoughts and big plans for us, and they're for an assured end, not a roller coaster life, but a solid, unmovable, unshakable foundation of a man and woman of God that are going to change the world. I believe it's going to happen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Don't forget about our announcements. VBS meeting after church in the Family Center, ladies' night, June the 29th at 6 o'clock, and I invite everybody to come. Even if you can't afford or don't have the means to bring some of the stuff that's on that list, you come anyway at Sister Amanda's invitation. Amen. Anything else? See you Sunday morning, 10 o'clock.